Welcome. Thanks for coming here. And I'll just give you a bit of context on what we're trying to do here. Trying to keep it easy, casual. Just want to get to know you a little better and want some insights from you about how things are going here, including the stories we are hearing about the Dallas skyline. Sweet. Love it. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Then let's get started with the present day. Uh, a great training session out there. The great vibe continues. How's your time been so far? Yeah, it's been a great crew that we've got. I think over the last two or three weeks, you couldn't have asked for a better environment to be part of. And um, we've got a coaching staff and a team that gels so well. So, you know, every training day, you're looking forward to getting on the bus, you're looking forward to the banter within each other, you know, the little warm up games we're playing. And, um, you know, and being able to share the field with some, you know, truly wonderful cricketers, but more, more, more so the important thing is wonderful individuals. So, um, it's been a, an amazing crew to be part of so far and hopefully you know we can keep this going through the playoffs and for the next few years. Yeah, it's been quite amazing, right? I would definitely personally uh, look forward to coming back here next year. Oh, so well, I mean, hopefully. Obviously nothing's set, ever set in stone, but I mean, uh, playing for the Freedom's been great. It sort of shows you what a great environment it can be with, you know, obviously very professional players, very professional staff um, from, you know, coaching staff to the admin guys to the marketing guys. Everyone sort of on the same page, which I think is, is great and it gel, like helps us just focus on the performance on the field, you know, and we can just go out there and do our jobs and not worry about all the other little little things that come with playing in high pressure situations. So, I mean, you know, hopefully it can be a, a group that's together for a very long time. I hope so too. And a uh, few things which really stand out is the kind of excitement we are seeing around, right? The sport is still new here, it's growing, but the fans are loud, they are vocal, they come here support us and uh, we love to hear Rachin Rachin chants happening in the stadium after the game. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've, I've seen this before in interviews and stuff, it's pretty surreal. I mean, to be, you know, a year late, well, a year on from where I might have been, you know, you don't really see these things happening and all of a sudden it happens and you're in that moment, you're in those situations and it makes you really pinch yourself and be grateful for what's happening and what's unfolding. You know, as a kid, you always dream of playing international cricket, playing, you know, franchise cricket around the world and stuff, but for it, for myself to be in this situation now, it's um, you know very special feeling being able to see genuine happiness on people's faces, and um, that to me is important. You know, like apart from the results and you know the winning and losing and stuff, and being able to inspire people is something that I hold you know very close to my heart, and it's um, a special feeling being able to see fans you know around the world um, show their love for us. And I mean, in the US especially, I probably wasn't expecting it to be um, so popular, but you know we come here and you get you know, some photos in the airports, you know, you get recognised sometimes and then you're at the ground and the sheer fanfare of it, it was surprising to me, you know, and that's exciting. I guess maybe it's a flow-on effect from the World Cup. Obviously, Team USA did really well and um, maybe there's, that's the reason why too, but um, I think it's just exciting and shows, you know, who knows what the future holds in uh, USA cricket. Amazing. And uh, while I wanted to talk a little bit more about our current setup and players, but now that we're talking about the fanfare, I would want to pause here and go back to your personal uh, journey as a cricketer, right? Uh, you're still young while you're put in the hard years behind. Uh, the rise to fame has been uh, quite rapid, I would say. So how do you manage uh, with that popularity or the sudden popularity which you have got? Yeah, I guess. It, you're right, things have happened relatively quickly. I think um, recognizing that is probably the first step to that and accepting it. I guess, like I, you know, like I said a year ago, I was potentially playing a different role for you know, teams I'm playing now. I was batting sort of six or seven for New Zealand and getting a little bit of a bat and had like, uh, like decent enough success to contribute to a team here and there. But um, I guess the opportunity to bat at the top of the order during that World Cup was probably the, the turning point. Um, and that and luckily enough had a few good innings was able to share some memories with good mates in the team and drive the team forward and uh, I guess here, here I am now and I mean I guess you're it does happen like it's I guess it's bound to happen if you do have a couple of good um, games but I think that's an important thing not to take anything for granted we know how fickle this game is how fickle cricket can be as a batter you fail more that you actually succeed so I think that's an important thing for me as well to keep going forward is understanding, look, obviously I've got the hunger and drive to continue going on and hopefully helping teams win games of cricket, but, um, you know, more often than not you fail, so it's, it's okay, you know, and giving yourself that leeway, the pat on the back every now and again. But, yeah, it has been a pretty crazy journey. I think you, know, you, you look at yourself as, as a kid and you, like, dream to be in this situation and very lucky to be and very honoured to be here right now. Wow. And uh, I want to know something personally from you, like when you're batting there when there are about 50, 60 or probably 100,000 people in the stadium, 
How does it feel? Yeah, you say that, it's, it's, it's crazy. I think there's been times in my career so far, especially in the last year, I've been able to sit back and reflect and been like, okay, that was like a special moment. I think there's time, you know, I mean, first World Cup game and I've had, you know, Dev, me and Dev had a good partnership, being able to share that with a really close mate and seeing the way he was batting that day was uh, was amazing. And there's times, you know, we played Australian World Cup game, almost got close, you know, played Pakistan, Bangalore, had some great games of cricket, India and at one Kadir semi-final, like those memories I'll never, I'll never forget, you know, and when, I guess if I was to put it in the moment, like, as when I was batting, I didn't quite, here, I don't quite, you know, you're just kind of in that bubble, you're in your zone, you know what you need to do, you know what the team requires, and if you're in a good enough flow, you know, the game sort of comes to you naturally. But I found sometimes, like, when I'm in a non-striker's end, or, you know, I just as I get out of something and it sort of switches off, and then you just soak it all in, and you're like, okay, this is pretty special. You know, there's times where I've been able to do that in the middle, and you mindfully breathe, and you, like, hear it all, and you're like, wow, okay, like, this is something I've dreamt of as a kid, and... For myself to be here now, it's um, you know, it's it's hard to put into words. Yeah. Uh, given how intense things are these days and how packed the calendars are, how much time do you find to yourself to unwind? Yeah, that's that's always going to be a difficulty playing international and a little bit of fan trust cricket here and there as well. Playing playing three formats and keeps your 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 year, year pretty busy. Um, but I think I'm very grateful for that. I think I love playing cricket and at this age, it's not like you know, I, I love being on tour. I love getting to know different people. I love spending time with my mates. And for me, that's special. You know, being able to travel the world, play a game that I love for a living at 24, it's a pretty good result, you know. So I think it's important that for me, I'm not taking this stuff for granted. But definitely there's times where you feel exhausted, you feel tired. But I think it comes back to, like, why I play this game and this perspective of it. Like, the reason why I played cricket when I started was because I enjoyed it. I, I love playing it. And right now, that's the exact same thing, you know. And for me, that's always going to be the driver. I want to get better. I want to learn from people around me and that's what's hopefully keeps me driving forward no matter how um, many games we've played and stuff and gives context to each and every single game. I know it's easy to say that here after a year, a year well, consistent year of playing a lot of cricket, but hopefully if I can maintain that mindset and, and enjoy each step in this journey, hopefully it'll hold me in better stead in the future. True. And what are the things you personally love to do to kind of unwind? We see a lot of boys, first chance they get there at the golf. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quite a golfer yet. Uh, I'm just not good enough. I just think if I go to the course, I'm just going to be spraying it left and right, and it's not going to be a fun time. But um, I really enjoy reading. Um, I love playing PlayStation. I like connecting with people back home. Um, those are my ways of unwinding and doing stuff. Like I enjoy going shopping, going out, like I guess having a look at the place and getting to know your surroundings a bit better because this is a great opportunity we have playing cricket around the world is being able to experience all these different environments and see how different people live and... Um, experience different food and you know the culture of different cities and stuff so that's something I'm very passionate in but um, you know but most of all I think I just enjoy spending time with with people you know my teammates good mates around um, that's for me that's important and that like rejuvenates me and being able to connect with people back home as well as um, what really energizes me lovely and um, I mean whosoever I speak to about you they have they praise you right they love Rachin and they also love to pull your leg all the time <laughs> And I feel that's one of the things which keeps us all smiling in this setup, right? Yeah, it's obviously very kind of you to say that, but yeah, I mean, it's the Kiwi way, I guess. Have, you know, be, you know, be pretty chilled and have have a bit of fun and have a bit of banter with your teammates. I think that's that's the beauty of it. You know, I've known a lot of these guys only you know two three weeks properly, and we're able to have share a laugh to each other. You know, give each other a little bit of chat here and there, and it just grows that sort of team um, buy-in. You know, we're all excited to share the field with each other and you know even little moments that seem funny you know you you accept that it's like oh yeah that's funny. you know it's funny people are you know taking the piss out of you but yeah I love that element of team sport and that's what drives me to continue playing cricket and, and drives me to play for these teams because being able to get to know people and work towards a common goal all while having fun at the same time um you know it's it's pretty special yeah and uh, talking about team setups you know you said you haven't got enough time with this bunch yet and that it's going to keep happening because you go to another tournament, you play with a different setup. Uh, how was it back in the IPL for you? Yeah, IPL was crazy. I think uh, there's times where it can be overwhelming. Um, I know obviously playing for Chennai and you know the presence of you know, Mahi and all the fanfare around him and the team, It's um, it was amazing. I think the, the Chennai fans are some of the best fans in the world, if not the best fans in the world. Um, and the sheer noise at the stadiums, at the grounds, you know, every 
game we played was full, like full house, completely sold out. Away games were like home games. Everyone had their whistles. It was yellow all in the crowd. Um, I think that also makes you excited and fizzes you up to play. You know, you're warming up and there's a full crowd already screaming your name. So those, again, those moments are, are amazing. Um, it just shows how crazy the Indian fans are, and we're all very, very grateful for that because without them, we wouldn't have the sport we play. You know, so it's obviously very fun. Um, being able to see the crowd reaction, you feed off that energy and it helps you, you know, motivates you and helps you put pressure back on the bowler or vice versa to the batter as well. And um, But I think most of all, the team environment's great. You know, I, I really enjoyed my time there. It was very chill. Flem runs a great sort of cutter and um, the great people around me, you know, we have Dev there, we had a couple of Kiwis and Daryl and Sat, have, you know, Sat's been there for a long time. Mo and Ali, great man, obviously Mahi, Rutu, all those like leaders in the team, Jadu, very calm very chill jinx and all those guys are just know how to run like a professional environment and a chilled and a winning environment so um, being able to rub shoulders with those guys taught me a lot of lessons but also made me enjoy my cricket a lot more too any particular conversation that st stands out for you maybe with them as Dhoni yeah Mahi's not a man of not many very like not many words you know but I think it's just his presence and his um, you know how he commands the dressing room and I think it's just mostly the calmness that he that he shows. Um, it shows, you know, in, in all cricket. I think even though the, the frenzy of the IPL and the craziness and the high pressure situations, I think the way Mahi and the, and the team in general um, are able to, you know, keep it calm and chill makes us feel like we can execute no matter what the situation is, and uh, makes it a whole lot easier. And even if you do, you know, fail, it's okay. You know, then the whole thing about process versus result. You know, focusing on the process because that's important. You can control that can't control the result, I think is great. And I think that's drummed into you as you sort of enter the environment. And um, that's why it's such a, such a cool place to play. Absolutely. And all of us like admire so many things we see, either it's about MS Dhoni or the fan support which we see. I mean, I've never seen so many people at a training session cheering the team on, right? Yeah, like it's just little things, you know, the training sessions, you go through airports, um, in the hotel, you know, it's... Yeah. It's again, pinch yourself moment. You know, you're like, wow, these guys really care. You know, these fans really care about us. They really care about the team. They care about the players in the team. They care about the coaching staff. Like we got Huss and Flem, and you know, all those guys. They care about them so much. And um, you know, you have one good game, and they're all, you know, <laughs> like you're yeah. they're, they're chanting your name. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty cool feeling to be able to do that. Like I said before, it's sort of something you dream of as a kid. But at the end of the day, we're just cricketers, and we just focusing on our jobs and being able to produce entertaining cricket and, and play the, the games we want to play. And for us, that's that's what's been important. True. And you've also spoken about your cricket heroes, right? Growing up, your cricket heroes. So uh, can you talk to me about um, when was your first interaction with your cricket heroes? Yeah, so I, <laughs> so I yeah. was a big fan of Tanulka, big fan of Rahul, big fan of Ponting, big fan of Lara, those guys, Sangakara. I remember having like an interview with Sangakara earlier, so this was probably September last year, and I was like so giddy. <laughs> I was like struggling, you know, struggling to speak because I was like, oh, I've watched every innings, man, like, you know, all his cover drives and stuff. And my mum's like, Rahul, like, I've played against him when he was coaching his under 19s and NDA and stuff for a while, and having a little conversation with him after that semi final at One Kid Air was, was special. And I guess in terms of the, the modern game, too, and you know, Coley and Kane are two the guys I've looked up to and being able to share a crease with Kane is a and like again another pinch yourself thing, like, oh my god, this is a guy through my teenage years I've been, you know, invested in his game and I've learned so much from him and his demeanour, his calmness, the way he approaches cricket and be able to share a crease with him, watch him bat from the best seat in the house is 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 mind blowing, you know, and being able to play against Coley has like see his intensity, admire his records, the stuff he does, you you see why he's achieved what he's achieved. So all those moments I'm very lucky and very grateful to have like had them, had the experience when I'm young as well. So I mean it's something I've never really taken for granted too because you know I'm, I love cricket, I love watching it, I love watching Tendulkar's innings, I've watched highlights of Tendulkar all the time, you know, so being able to, you know, rub shoulders with those guys has been, you know, incredible. Yeah, I, I have a lot of Tendulkar stories myself, I'm a huge fan. But we'd love to hear about your story when you got his autograph. Yeah, um, this was a long time ago. He, he definitely wouldn't remember it, but um, I was probably seven years old or seven or eight in Wellington. I was just having a hit with Dad and another another friend, and um, I think it was probably uh, Tanoka maybe wanted to get a little bit more hitting in or whatever, and he's rocked up 
they had a tour to New Zealand at that point. And they came to that same indoor nets I was in, so it was crazy. I was able to hit a few balls, and I was able to like sit beside his net and watch him play, and you know, get the throws and the spin. And that for me was a incredible experience. You know, it was unbelievable to see someone who was you know caliber like the you know the effect he has on, on the world to be able to come in to like Wellington, you know, the city I sort of grew up in, and uh, see him, you know, get it, go about his work, and watch him how he played, which was which was special, and been able to get my bat autographed by him at the end as well I think one memory of it is just like he took you know so long and so me- me- what's the word I'm looking for meticulous in terms of the way he uh, wrote his autograph and for me that was like wow you know a guy who's this big can give time to a seven-year-old um, you know some some kid from Wellington you know from a small little city in, in New Zealand so um, for me that that's a that's a great memory and I already see you giving it back to the fans because the other day when we were doing the autographs after the game, I mean, I think you would have clicked more than like 50, 60 selfies out there. Yeah, I, th- I think it, it comes down to that fact, like, obviously they're very happy to see you and it comes down to the fact of, I was, I guess, I was once one of those kids who wanted a s- the signature or a photo with my favourite player and um, I know that the feeling that I had as a kid um, to be able to, you know, have that and I guess being able to give that back to the community and um, I know, look, there's still a very long way to go in my career and stuff, but... I think if, you know, it just, we look, at the end they were just cricketers, but I think people see us as role models and we're able to make a difference. And I think that's the special part of it, being able to see, like I said before, genuine happiness on people's faces. And that's something that you, you love being able to spread that. And um, it's, you know, something you can give back to the fans for supporting you so much. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Rashin, I want to ask you last few things before we start winding this up. So, last few things I want to talk about. One, definitely, I want to touch upon. Uh, what are your goals in life and not just cricket right because everyone wants to go out there win the World Cup win the, win the Test Championship but apart from that what are your goals? So yeah obviously cricket stuff is, is all there but I think mostly for me it's to be a good person in there. I want people to you know I like having connecting with people from you know different walks of life and you know your teammates and being able to have that and at the end of the day I guess it goes beyond your cricket achievements you know Hopefully, then you know people can say, "Oh, yeah, Rachman was a great teammate. Um, he was a great person to be around, and he gave for the team, and he gave for others, and he was selfless." And that's the sort of stuff that I want to be. And I think I haven't been a massive goal setter before because I, I feel like you know either you can put too much pressure or it puts a cap on you or whatever. There's a lot of different arguments for it, but that's why I like to sort of live in the now. And I think I want to be able to sit back, hopefully at the end of my career, whether I scored you know thousands of runs or not many at all, or won X amount of World Cups and not won many at all, I can be satisfied and happy that I've, you know, savoured each part of this journey because it's pretty special and trying to savour each moment that I'm in um, for me is important and I think that helps by mixing with guys and, um, you know, enjoying my time with my teammates. Yeah, I think you are on the right track. Everyone loves you here. <laughs> uh, hopefully. I mean, like I said, it's a long journey ahead. I think there's definitely, you know, I've only, like I said, it's been a, a last year has been um, pretty full on, but... I think hopefully if I can keep on going and enjoying my cricket and stuff and that all that other stuff will take care of itself. Sure. Uh, now, turning our focus back to Washington Freedom, uh, how's the journey been like with Ricky Ponting, the coach? Yeah, uh, Rick has been amazing. I think as soon as I saw he was coaching the team, I was pretty excited to be honest. Again, another little pinch yourself moment. I think a guy who I've idolised growing up, um, my first bat was a Kookaburra Kahuna back in the day. <laughs> So um, with the black on the back, so to be able to you know be involved in the same team as him is special. I think he's a great coach, got great advice for everyone. Um, you know, cares about the team, is very competitive, and it, and it shows. You know, he's part of so many successful teams in the past. He's a player. Well, he's played so much cricket, he's scored so many runs, but he's also coached many teams. He's seen many players. So I think he's not just a very good coach, but he's a well-rounded individual. He can have conversations, and he's a great man to have part of the team. And what are those qualities you admire the most? Because I'll tell you something from my experience, right? Uh, whenever he introduces himself, he doesn't talk about his cricketing achievements. He says that's in the past. Definitely. I think that's like nail on, on its head. You know, he's not living the past days and he's not necessarily, you know, like what he's focused right now is where his feet are. And I think that's a very admirable, you know, uh, value because he's just able to be like, hey, this is the gig right now. I'm coaching Washington Freedom. I'm trying to get these players better and I'm trying to yeah. drive the team to play competitive cricket and hopefully winning cricket at the end of the day. But sometimes that's not controllable. But I think the messages that he's been giving out to the players has been great. Um, and that's something I admire massively. I think he's also obviously a competitive guy. He's 
won so much and that's something I admire but I think him as a coach is, is similar in that way but he's always trying to help people which I think is um, probably the biggest quality in, in coaches. I, I absolutely love him. Mm, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that brings me to rest of the folks in our team, right? Uh, from cricketing sense, having someone like a Travis Head and Steve Smith opening the batting and Smudge is looking completely different. He's so aggressive these days. He's expressing himself. He's smiling a lot more. Mm. It's great to have that cushion at the top when you come into bat. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm playing, I guess, like a slightly different role to what I'm used to. I'm usually sort of bound the top three. Now I'm sort of, depends on the matchup, four, five around that area. So it's obviously for me trying to learn from that and become a more versatile cricketer and add strings to my bow. But I mean, it's so nice having this guy at the top of the order. Two world class players, smudge, probably the greatest of all time, one of the greatest of all time, greatest test player of all time. Um, and then you've got obviously Trev, who's had the most incredible two years. Anyone, you know, World Cup 100, World Test Championship Final 100, you know, like. Those things are like, you know, stuff you dream of. So I think the form that he's in, the way they play the cricket, and I think it's something we all can take from, from them. They play competitive cricket. They know what their games are, and they go out with a fearless attitude, you know. And I think it shows the success that they've had through this tournament. Hopefully they continue pushing on that forward, but it shows that. And they're also very good team people. They're, they do whatever they can for the team, and that's what's important, you know. And more than the runs and wickets, you know, the success they've had, I think they're very good people. And I think that's what... Uh, drives this team as well. It's not just about the stars the, and the world-class names that we have in this team, but it's also the way everyone treats each other. And for me, that's probably the most important quality. True. And what has been your favorite game so far? It's a tough one. I think it's probably it'll probably be that Mumbai game. I think that it was a clinical game from us. I think the a batting effort um, to get the total on the board, one eighty odd on a slightly niggly wicket, was great and. The way the boys, you know, bowl at the top, you know, Jesse coming in and, you know, uh, incredible, you know, after Sarab's been so good and being able to come in and do his job and Marco obviously gun with the new ball, Lockie, everyone's just contributing, which has been great, the energy's great. Um, that was probably the most complete team performance from us and we understand it in cricket, you can't actually have that all the time because that's that's just the way the game is. So I think we strive for that performance every time we go out and play, but um, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying our best and I think that's probably the best performance we, we put out in the park so far. Also, the level which our USA players are showing is quite incredible, right? Uh, particularly the game where uh, Lahiru and Ovas got us through. So that has impressed you too? Definitely. I think you you look at the quality of US players amongst the comp has been great. I mean, I wasn't around last year, but this year it looks amazing. Like, you know, it's not necessarily guys are out of place at all. And it's a very, I think it's one of the, probably the, if not well, second most competitive competition in, in the world at the moment. So um, with the amount of overseas talent and the local talent that's coming through, it's great. I mean, you saw the, like the innings that Sanjay scored against us last yeah. night, was uh, two nights ago, was unbelievable. Um, you know, Obis and Lahiru getting us through. Lahiru coming in for one game, getting that done. Obis, the work he's done at the back end for us. Sarah, Halsey, all those boys are, you know, contributing across the board and um, for me, that's that's amazing to see. You know, it's not just the star names like Trav and, and Smudge doing the job, but it's like everyone's co as a collective have, has made cameos and helped the team out in different ways. And um, I think that's that's key to key team success. You know, everyone being able to feel like they can contribute, and um, it's been pretty cool to see that. Yeah, and with the qualification for 2020 T20 World Cup, I'm sure the cricket is only going to grow for the US team. Yeah, it looks like it. Obviously, they had a great T20 World Cup and there's a little bit more buzz and interest around it. I don't know if it's just because of that or something, but um, I know more people are taking more interest into the game. So hopefully it keeps growing. I mean, this is a great tournament to play in and um, hopefully it just keeps getting better and better. Yeah, best wishes to them. And uh, before we wrap up this chat, just want to bring up something which we always wanted to about you and your love for the Dallas skyline. <laughs> Oh, see, see what's the story? Is, <laughs> see, this is where we talk about banter, <laughs> and I've been given a lot of marbles for this over the last couple of weeks. So, anyways, I've got this thing where I, every place I go to, um, I'm trying to get like magnets from each city just to, you know, show I've been to this place or whatever, and put it on on the fridge. Um, and then this one day, we're in the Dallas airport. Marco and Lockie, two guys I spent a lot of time with. I went to pick up the Dallas thing and I had the Dallas skyline. and I was like, oh, look at this, boys, that looks cool. And straight away they looked at each other, gave me 10 minutes of just heat. 
absolute heat, spraying me. Oh, yeah, bro, like, Dallas is one of the most recognizable skylines in the world, whatever, whatever. So now it's evolved. Every time we're driving past the skyline of the bus, guys film it. Oh, and then send it to me. Oh, what a beautiful skyline. I ended up not going for that magnet. <laughs> I ended up getting the one that had a, you know, a Texas Longhorn on it. That was probably more fitting. But, yeah. um... Yeah, <laughs> it just shows the team spirit that we have. I wanted to take it because I give it out too, so it's okay. Amazing, Gretchen. Thank you so much for chatting to us. This was fun. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. It's been good. Awesome, man. Cheers, Thank bro. you. Cheers. Thanks.